Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with U.S. President Donald Trump. The two leaders discussed the strong bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields, in addition to means of developing these relations. His Majesty the King praised the solid ties of strategic cooperation between the two countries and the joint keenness on enhancing these relations. His Majesty also extended his condolences to the U.S. President on the American people over those who lost their lives because of the coronavirus, asserting the importance of international cooperation to combat this current pandemic. The U.S. President commended the precautionary measures and are taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain, stressing his country's readiness to provide any assistance to combat the epidemic. His Majesty the King expressed deepest thanks to President Trump on his stance and reassured him about Bahrain's success in containing the virus at this stage. His Majesty commended the U.S.-led efforts to maintain security and stability in the region and the active role of the American military forces to protect the international maritime corridors in the Arabian Gulf, Arabian Sea and Bab al-Mandeb Strait, praising President Trump's efforts to stabilize the energy markets which support global economic growth. The U.S. President expressed deepest thanks to His Majesty the King for facilitating and hosting the Fifth Fleet of the U.S. Army, expressing his appreciation for His Majesty's sincere feelings and reiterating his country's keenness on strengthening U.S. Bahrain relations and working together to maintain regional security and stability to protect global interests. His Majesty the King and the U.S. President agreed to hold a meeting in the near future. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Rafah Palace, BCCI Chairman Samir Nas and deputies, where His Royal Highness discussed with them ways to enhance the economy and the commercial sector in the current circumstances. His Royal Highness praised the role of the commercial sector of the kingdom in facing all challenges, in which it proved itself to be an active partner and support to the government. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the BCCI chairman and members for always cooperating with the government. He highlighted the BCCI's contributions to the Kingdom's economy throughout history. His Royal Highness affirmed that all economic measures taken by the Kingdom aim to benefit the citizens first and then enable the commercial sector to continue its activities, affirming that the government will continue supporting the industrial and commercial sectors. His Royal Highness called to set a strategic plan to deal with any upcoming economic emergency, especially regarding food security and the availability of products in the markets. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to cooperate with the BCCI to intensify efforts to study the situation of SME owner, owners and self-employed people who are affected by the precautionary measures taken to combat the spread of COVID-19. He stressed the importance of doubling efforts in this current period to overcome the repercussions of the virus and strengthen the national economy. He affirmed that the government's priority is to protect the safety of citizens and residents and supporting all sectors to continue its work. His Royal Highness expressed confidence in Bahrain's ability to overcome this crisis because the development march of the kingdom is based on investing in human elements, but also expressed pleasure in the citizens' patriotism and loyalty in support of their homeland. He urged BCCI to intensify efforts to cooperate with businessmen to ensure meeting the needs of citizens of various food supplies and other commodities and ensuring their availability in the market and taking into account the price controls, especially with the approach of the holy month of Ramadan. He also called the BCCI to work with various commercial and industrial sectors to ensure the adherence to precautionary measures to prevent the spread of the corona coronavirus among expatriate workers. The chairman of the BCCI expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for supporting the chamber and the commercial and industrial sectors in the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Board of Trustees Chairman of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the unprecedented response of the citizens with national campaign There Is Good In Us through their donations that are aimed at contributing to the national efforts to combat the coronavirus. His Highness stressed that the success of the campaign is in response to the great initiatives launched by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to protect the safety of the kingdom as well as its citizens and residents. His Highness noted that since the outbreak of the epidemic, His Majesty ordered the allocation of a big budget to prioritize the well-being of citizens and residents and to support the economy, which made Bahrain a leading country in fighting COVID-19. 
His Highness made the statements when he launched that there is good enough campaign through Bahrain TV, where he dedicated the success of the campaign to His Majesty the King. He commended the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He asserted that the Bahraini people proved their united support for the leadership of His Majesty in combating COVID-19 and ensured the success of the national efforts in this regard. His Highness expressed deep pride in the participation of the citizens, companies and institutions in the national campaign, valuing highly their donations. He prayed for the safety of Bahrain and said that the kingdom deserves the great sacrifices that are being made for it. The Secretary General of RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, extended thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his constant support for the needy. He also praised the efforts of His Royal Highness the Premier as well as the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in combating COVID-19. He also thanked His Highness Sheikh Nasser for launching the national campaign to mobilize the efforts of all citizens and residents to battle the outbreak. Dr. Said extended thanks and appreciation to all those who contributed to the success of the campaign and noted that the collection of 21 million Bahraini dinars in donations represents a historic moment. He asserted that the campaign will continue until after the holy month of Ramadan and that contributions may be made through the RHF's website or through a direct bank transfer. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, held the weekly session remotely where the council approved a draft law on volunteering to serve public security, which aims to regulate the provisions of voluntary work in public security service. The council had begun its session by ratifying the minutes of the previous session, which included the decision of the council of representatives regarding the Shura Council's decision on a draft civil service law and a draft law on housing. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, said that since the emergence of the coronavirus and before its spreading, the state has made every effort and strengthened its health and preventive measures. He added that Kuwait took various measures to confront the virus according to the highest standards of the WHO. In his speech to the citizens, His Highness stressed the need for returnees to Kuwait during the current period to abide by the instructions of the health authorities in order to prevent preserve their health and the health of their families and the safety of the entire community. He noted that the success of efforts containing the pandemic depends on cooperation and solidarity. The Saudi Ministry of Interior announced the isolation of Al Faisaliyah and Al Fadliyah neighborhoods in Al Hassan Governorate, and it was prohibited to roam at any time until further notice. A source in the ministry said that the decision comes in light of the precautionary measures to limit the spread of the coronavirus, and the kingdom affirmed that all preventive measures should continue to be applied and strengthened at entry points, and that all precautionary measures should be taken to counter the virus and prevent its spread. The UAE announced that a fine of 20,000 dirhams would be imposed on violators who spread rumors and wrong health information. The UAE cabinet adopted the decision with the aim of preserving the health and safety of the community and addressing any false health information that may have negative repercussions on the society. The decision comes in light of government efforts to promote health awareness among the public and provide them with the correct facts, instructions and procedures away from the spread of the rumors and false news. And now we move to Yasmeen for the latest in business news. Thank you, Mohammed. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmeen Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,320,015 points, marking an increase of 7.17 points above the previous closing. This increase was due to the rise in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and services sector. 47 equity transactions took place with a volume of 3,277,600 
worth 4,011,939 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 37.4% of the total value of securities traded. China's economy is showing signs of recovery as the country continues to resume work and production. The rise in the country's electricity consumption is one of the best indicators for rising economic activity, showing that the Chinese economy has gradually recovered from the deadly virus since late March. Other indicators, including the output of the service sector, investment and retail sales of social consumer goods, also narrowed decline in March, which showed signs of improvement. China is seeing high volumes of overseas cargo planes as well as passenger planes as other countries scramble to receive medical supplies and equipment. Over 250 cargo planes are landing or leaving Shanghai's airport each day, which is bigger than the daily volume of the same time last year. The total volume of outgoing medical cargo has now surpassed 10,000 tons. Authorities had to redesign the cargo logistics route to meet the rising demand. As the pandemic rages on, the demand of medical supplies is soaring across the world. Many countries are using passenger planes to transport light goods from China. President Donald Trump says his administration is launching a 19 billion program to help farmers struggling from the pandemic. The Agriculture Secretary says that the program includes 16 billion in direct payments to farmers, ranchers and producers who experience losses. The Department of Agriculture will spend another 3 billion to purchase fresh produce, dairy and meat products that will be distributed through food bank networks. Stocks rally to a higher close as investors latch onto strands of hope about progress in the fight against the virus. The S&P 500 soared to its first back-to-back -back weekly gain since the pandemic triggered a sell-off in February. Investors are focusing on the possibility of, reopening, of a reopening economy. Optimists point to infections leveling off in some hard-hit areas. That raises the possibility that parts of the economy could reopen, leading to an eventual pickup in profits. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is all from the business desk. It's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Yasmin. A designer in Vietnam is using traditional embroidery to decorate face masks. The accessories are meant to be fashionable while also helping stop the spread of coronavirus. Do Kiu Yen Hoa has created a new line of masks adorned with traditional hand embroidery. She started to make the masks in February as COVID-19 spread in the country and Vietnam's government made it compulsory to wear face protection in public places. The masks are made with two or three piles of natural cotton materials enough to shield droplets and dust. As well as being fashionable, Wa wants to honor Vietnamese traditional craftsmanship. 